Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Prime News. I got five big stories for you uh, to end our week. That's right, this is the last episode of Prime News this week. It'll be a series running Monday through Friday, releasing between 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. Uh, Central Standard Time, if you guys haven't figured that out by now. I'm trying to be super consistent with this. If an episode ever gets delayed till later in the day, it's likely because there are just so many big stories that need to be covered in a certain way or updates to stories as they go. But I'm trying my best to get these out uh, and hopefully you've been enjoying them. This is a, a an old series kind of reinvigorated and brought back. Uh, speaking of reinvigorated and brought back. We have more giveaways going on. We're giving away two copies of Super Mario 3D All-Stars. Uh, if you want to find out how to enter uh, 3D All-Stars. See, I did it again. You guys have been catching me on this all week. It's Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury. We're giving away two copies of that uh, through the link down in the description. I should say a link. The how to enter is detailed down in the description or in the pinned comment. Man, I'm losing it. It's been a long week. Let's get into the first story. Activision Blizzard recently did an earnings call with investors. Again, it's that time of the year. It's that time of the month where this is happening at all major businesses. And we learned a couple notable things that affect some Switch owners, but also gamers in general. And that is that Overwatch 2 and Diablo 4 are not releasing this year. Now, they didn't say for sure they're going to come out in 2022. However, we've known about both of these games for quite some time. Now, if you're a Switch owner hoping that we could play these games, well, good news is Overwatch 2 was already announced for Nintendo Switch, and we got Diablo 3 on Nintendo Switch last year. So, there's actually a lot of hope that both of these games are going to come to Switch. One of them already confirmed. Now, if you guys want to don't remember, uh, if you own the original Overwatch, you already will get the PvP section of Overwatch 2 for free because they are focusing Overwatch 2, while there will be new PvP content, more so on PvE. So that is actually a big thing in Overwatch already, and they're just expanding upon it in Overwatch 2. But again, 2022 is the earliest we're going to see either one of these games, and I frankly can't wait. It, it feels like we've been stuck with Diablo 3 and stuck with Overwatch for quite some time, but then the pandemic hit. I think these games were supposed to come last year, if we're completely honest, but you know what? The pandemic makes things a little bit worse for all of us. Next up, we have a bit of an oopsie from Dave Malloy. So, uh, you guys remember Ghost of Tsushima came out last year for PlayStation 4, and then they actually did a big PlayStation 5 update for it, so now it's at that crisp 4K 60 FPS. It's one of the best looking games really of last generation and current generation for now. Well, here's the thing. He did an oopsie on his LinkedIn uh, bio profile where he says, hey, look, I'm working on the next uh, Ghost of Tsushima for PlayStation 5. Now, he is the cinematic creative director of that game at Sucker Punch. And the thing is, some people were like, well, it just says Ghost of Tsushima. How do we know it's the sequel? Well, all the PlayStation 5 updates have already been done. And this stuff appeared in his bio in the last week, which highly suggests we're talking about a brand new game, a sequel, all that jazz. So, again... Shouldn't be really surprising we're going to get a Ghost of Tsushima sequel, but now we know it's probably an active development over at Sucker Punch. So, hey, you know what? PlayStation 5 owners, the all five of you that exist, <laughs> be hyped. Uh, our next story is going to require some look at the notes because we're talking about a Sonic game. A brand new, unannounced Sonic game that has had a slew of leaks over the past months that have been all culminated over on you know, much maligned forum, NeoGAF. Uh, but I'll put a link down to the original post for all this, but I'm gonna go through all these details because people are starting to say that this is coming from reputable sources. Again, truckload of salt and all that. Let's just get into it. The game is called Sonic Unlimited. And I think this news is all coming around because of Sonic Prime that was officially announced as a new Netflix series. Uh, so it's not a reboot of the Sonic series, uh, but it is going to be set up as a new entry point. So if you've never played a Sonic game before, they're looking at this as, hey, look, get into Sonic again with this game. Uh, it deals with the Hedgehog series species and lore, and that this is actually directly related to the story that's going to be in Sonic Prime. So... There you go, kind of a tease for Sonic Prime potentially, and also, hey, uh, they're going to take that lore behind the hedgehog itself 
and uh, put it into this game. Uh, there is no boost, which is a common move uh, in Sonic games that is not in this game. Uh, there is a new female protagonist. Uh, they are modeled after a hare, you know, rabbits, all that jazz. Uh, it, they use a spear and they look like a dragon somehow from Final Fantasy. I, I'm just telling you what it says on my paper here. I, I don't, I don't make these leaks and rumors. They're not from me. I'm not the source. I'm just the messenger. Uh, Eggman has a new minion, a female minion called Tribot. Uh, the game should be released this year. Um, however, pandemic, COVID, all that jazz, even though leakers are like, could possibly be delayed to early 2022. Uh, there are no wisps, but there are limited power-ups that exist through things called moon shards that only hedgehogs can use. And that means Amy and Sonic can use these. Only Amy and Sonic are playable. Uh, claims the gameplay feels really good, whatever that means. You know, we've had good and bad Sonic games over the years, so they're saying this leans towards good, but we've heard stuff like this before, and then the games ended up just being eh. So we'll see what happens. Uh, this game has a lot of story and the most cutscenes ever for a Sonic game. The most ever. Uh, the game is the deepest story wise Sonic has ever been. Uh, and then Super Forms Return. So, you know, you take this for what it is. Uh, I love Sonic games to a certain extent. Uh, I actually really enjoyed Sonic Forces a lot. Uh, some people aren't really into that. Also, Sonic the Lost World back on Wii U. You guys remember that game? Oh, I remember that game because I beat it. And I played that Skyward Sword level like crazy. Like, I... I really liked The Lost World. It's actually my favorite Sonic game, believe it or not, beating out Sonic Adventures 2. So it is what it is. I've been playing Sonic games pretty much as long as I've been playing Mario games. Uh, so it's really cool to see that, hey, another one's coming, uh, likely coming this year. And, of course, when we saw the announcement of Sonic Prime, there's almost always like a, a, a show game like linking that happens in the Sonic series. So, uh, yeah, that's a thing. I actually have to look at my notes again for this next story because... I'm a little, you know what? No, I'm not, I'm dropping the paper. I'm gonna do this from memory and uh, I'll fix it in post if I mess up. So Apple is rumored, reported, leaked to be working on a VR headset. Uh, and the reason we're talking about this isn't because, oh, look, we already have VR headsets out in the space. I'm not even that big into VR. Um, although that Half-Life Alex experience was mwah, like the, quintessential VR game. Uh, so yeah, we have all these other competitors in the space, but Apple's looking to get in with their own headset. And what's crazy is Apple's not going for no low end. Not that we should expect an Apple product ever to go for the low end. Uh, they're going for the highest of possible ends. And that includes 8K lenses for each eye. That's right, 8K resolution on each eye. That's a 16K worth of resolution between both eyes. That is, woo! That is insane. Uh, it's apparently codenamed the N301. Uh, and yeah, they're going to do some interesting things here. Uh, one version of it reportedly has 12 cameras on the head that not only track your hands for obviously some epic VR action, but also allow for really, really good augmented reality experiences by lighting the outside world in and then being able to overlay over it. We've seen things attempted like this with Google Glass and stuff in the past, but to see Apple kind of go full board with this so you get amazing AR plus amazing VR in one headset, ho -ho! should be interesting. Now, how are they achieving this? Well, they're using a, the successor to their current M1 chip, which is used in their Pro and Air laptops uh so that's their new chip super fast it's done really really well for video editing and all that jazz uh, it's replaced intel processors in their stuff but here's the thing they're actually going to use the successor so whatever's next in the m1 line in this and how they're going to achieve that 8k resolution per eye is essentially the only things that are going to be perfectly in 8k are what you're focused on the things that are kind of on the edges or that your eyes are not looking at, they're using special eye tracking technology, uh, will be a little bit more blurry. So they won't be at that full 8K resolution uh, in the peripheral until you focus over to that area of the scene. Uh, this is actually a well-known technology that already exists 
in VR, and it's actually something that's been used in traditional games as well. That's why sometimes you'll see like the center of your TV when you're playing a game looks more focused than the outside edges. This is a well-known technique in gaming, uh, so to see it be taken advantage of when you're pushing 8K resolution to each eye uh, individually, yeah, that's a, that's a lot of pixels. Um, so we'll see. It's rumored to cost three thousand dollars at the consumer level to buy this headset don't know if the headset's even going to get announced this year or come out but that's the thing that's out there uh and yeah i just needed to talk about it because our last story is actually kind of a sad one uh so i'm going to glance at my notes for that last story because i just want to make sure that i don't mess anything up here uh, and i feel a, a little bit guilty having this story in a prime news episode because these episodes are monetized and i don't want to be seen as someone uh who is profiting off of a tragedy like this but it's just big news and i didn't want to do its own video um and i i have a lot of college stuff today so i'm, I'm not sure i could get this video out anyway so i'm just doing this at the end of prime news um i think we need to have a little bit of a moment of silence because the Zenimax ceo um robert altman has died so let's just take a moment to just reflect So uh, he was 73 years old, so he at least got to live up into his 70s. He's also married to the original Wonder Woman, for those who don't know, Lydia Carter. Um, he founded ZeniMax Media actually back in 1999, but before that he was actually a lawyer. So he was already pretty successful in life before founding ZeniMax Media. For people who want to know why we care about ZeniMax Media as a gamer, uh, they're actually the parent company to id Software, Arcane Studios, Machine Games, Bethesda Studios, and Tango Gameworks. So they've done a lot of acquisitions and stuff over the years. And these acquisitions, if we're honest, have not actually impacted the quality of the games coming from these companies. So some people always were, weren't were sure about Altman because of the way that he was um, getting control of these companies, but he was really using his lawyer background to find all the legal ways to um, attain these studios. And the studios actually ended up flourishing under ZeniMax. Now, we all know ZeniMax itself is actually uh, in the process of being sold to Microsoft for $7.5 billion. Uh, but still, it doesn't change the fact that this is the person that made ZeniMax happen that ultimately led to Microsoft's you know, acquisition, which is going to be decided on March 5th in Europe. I think that's what they're waiting on right now to finalize the sale. There's a, there's a whole legal thing going on there about it. Now, um, the big thing that I, I want to note here is that um, he, uh, based on how people are reacting, various studio heads and all that, um, he appears to have been extremely loved by the people that worked under him. Um, and he, uh, you know, he, he was very personable during the pandemic. He, an email has been released. We're not going to read the whole email, but essentially he was constantly checking in on all the employees in the entire company, calling them the Zenimax family, uh, and checking in on them during the pandemic to make sure they're doing well mentally to take a step back and enjoy some of the things we're getting back in the world, like more birds and animals and more nature things as, as there's less, um, you know, human interaction with, with the wild. And then also to be like, Hey, he understands it's really hard to just stay home all the time. And these stay at home orders in places like California are difficult. And he just wants people to take mental breaks from the work they're trying to do at home so they can try to keep a healthy, um, you know, work at home versus, uh, you know, actually being with your family at home life. So he looked like he actually gave a shit about the employees that worked under him. And that's probably why we haven't heard a ton of horror stories about the crazy crunch that happens at the companies that ZeniMax controlled because the guy at the top, the CEO himself, actually valued people's mental health. Uh, and that can't be understated because there's so few CEOs of major corporations that seem to give a shit about anything but the bottom dollar. And he seemed to legitimately care about them as people. So, uh, you know, thanks Robert Altman for what you've done, both the good and the bad, because obviously there's always going to be those bad stories out there. They don't go away just because someone has passed away. Uh, we're not sure why he died. I'm not even going to begin to speculate on why he died because that is for the family to worry about. Uh, but you know, my thoughts and prayers, I know people say who cares about that stuff. You know what? I'm religious, so I care. Uh, my thoughts and prayers go out to the family and any of the employees working under him uh, that ended up being personally affected by this. Uh, rest in peace, man. All right, folks. Uh, that's the end of Prime News. Again, a somber end. I don't really feel like it's right to 
to dance my way out of here. So we're just going to fade out. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in. And hopefully we have a, a nice, bigger uptick, positive start to Prime News next week.